Hey guys, this is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where you where we bring you the biggest stories and entertainment and showbiz. My name is Afel Lua Oshunke to bring you up to speed with all the trending entertainment stories. With me right now is the exciting and bouncing baby girl, Ewa Oritu. What's Hello, up, girl? baby? <laughs> all right, so today we will be joined by a fast ride and studio guest, and you don't want to definitely miss the convo. So, what's popping, mama? What's good? Um, Risky's popping right now. Risky. Risky. And I'm on that risky, risky level right now. Right well, now. <laughs> all right, so we have just reached. Before we get to the risky mm -hmm. part, we have just reaching us a South African rapper, aka Diaz Bonner Boy, to fulfill his promise to beat him up, especially in his own country, as Bonner Boy is set to attend the show in South Africa. Bonner Boy swore on Gambo's grave that South African rapper, aka, should have a big security when they cross paths after his tweet suggesting xenophobia. Bonner Boy promised to never set foot in South Africa until the South African government worked a miracle to stop the ongoing xenophobic attacks. Mm. Hmm. Okay, so my take on this is, um, Bonaboy, first of all, you're the giant of Africa. If you say something, keep, keep to your, to your word. words. Yeah, mm. because um, first of all, you say you're not going to go to South Africa. We have the likes of Tiwa Savage who cancel their concerts you know, and other people. Who basket beat. mouth. Yeah, basket mouth. They all cancel their, con um, their concerts or their shows in South Africa mm. based on the xenophobic attacks. And then Bonaboy was one of the people that, that was, was strongly, really, really, yeah, you know. Yeah, um, outspoken about the xenophobic attacks attacks saying especially when it um, came to AK mm. it was really against AK attacking him about his tweets about mm. the football match between Nigeria and um, South, South Africa, Africa. Mm. and um, Nigeria lost to South I mean yeah South Africa lost, lost to Nigeria, Nigeria. and um, AK had some things to say and people didn't take it lightly and they brought that tweets back when the xenophobic attacks mm. started right and then now Bonaboy was saying that, oh, with all these things, AKA should have a big security, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. So right now I'm saying put your money where your mouth is because Period. it's not like you're putting your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. So if you're going for a show out there, we would actually like to see what Bonaboy is going to do because if it's all talk and no action, then, bro, are you really um, the giant of Africa? When I saw this, I was just very... Because Bonaboy is somebody that I really like and respect. Mm -hmm. So I was very disappointed that he would think that he wants to have a show in South Africa. After coming out to say that you will never set your foot in South Africa until their government do something about it. I mean, there are fresh um, xenophobic attacks going on right now. You can, you can even use the opportunity to speak against it again and say, because of this reason, you're still cancelling your own show. But mm -hmm. instead, you're going ahead... To, to that same country that you said you would never set your foot there. And after swearing on Gambo's grief, you now go to that shall not do anything to it. It sounds again. like money costs nonsense in this case. <laughs> because this one is not money stop nonsense. I mean... I think um, they must have offered him a, a prize that he cannot resist mm. and then he's now going for the show. No, but, but I mean, he should think about his own um, dignity. If you're not keeping to your word, I mean, why should I respect uh, you? In his defense, um, the South African president sent an envoy to Nigeria to actually apologize to Nigerians. We've had Nigerians being um, brought back to Nigeria um, mm. um, from South Africa after the xenophobic attack. So um, in his defense, he can say that, okay, something is being done. now. But I mean, we have we're fresh things. attacks going on right now. Yeah, but so, uh, at the end words. of the day, the president has apologized. So I'm not saying in the, 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 it's not that I'm supporting <laughs> Bonner. I don't think I'm on Bonner's side because oh. I'm very disappointed that he's actually going to headline a show mm. in South Africa after all that talk. Bro, you don't talk if you're not going to you take know. action. Do you understand? If you know that it's all about the money, if you know this is business, look, Tiwa Savage lost a lot of money I by mean. not performing um, at that concert, right? right? Um, so if it's about the money, then... What are we really fighting for? Mm. Are we fighting for money or are we fighting for justice? Are we fighting for what is right or are we fighting for what well, we, think we think is good is for good us? For, yeah, mm. because I think now this is you being selfish, selfish Bonaboy. Right. Boy. I totally and I'm not agree with even you. going to lie about that. I mean, um, let's drop Bonaboy and face the other brother. He needs to calm down too. 
you get. You don't have to like. No, if I was AK, I would say the same thing because if after you have told me such things like, oh, the next time we cross path, better have a big security. There's this, this that. I'm not gonna come to your country. And AK clearly told you, then stay in your country. Mm. And then you're not coming to my country after you don't run your mouth and you think I'm just gonna lay back and you'll be like, oh, but boy. The guy said he's going to attend the show. That he would love to attend the show and see him lay his hands on it. So let's it's see what's going to happen. In his country. If and I have seen a lot of AK tweets, um, South Africans tweets saying, okay, I think this is when we take down the giants of Africa. This is when, like, I, I just hope that the concert, if Bonaboy is going to finally attend. Maybe David will keep Goliath in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we never can tell, but um, they should not solve all this. We already have so much violence going on around the world right now. They should not it's part of the hip-hop culture anyways. I don't think, I don't think um, we should keep um, the violence as part of hip-hop culture. I mean, there are other things that can happen and they don't have to kill each other or go really violence with each other. Yeah. All right, so let's watch the space and see what happens. So on to the next, there's an update on the Davido alleged pregnancy story, but I know who is most passi passionate <laughs> about this. So I'm passing the baton to the delectable Ewa Ritu to break this down. Mm. When I saw that Davido is not forgiving those girls, I was so excited. Mm. You know, I said it um, in our previous show. What do you think show. he's going to keep to that? I don't know. He's going to forgive them. Let's, I, let's but I don't want him to actually forgive them. They need to be held accountable Chama for that. To him. Oh, you think, I, I think it's even Chama that is pushing <laughs> this thing that do something to those girls. If you know you don't have anything to do with that girl, do something about it. I mean, something I can do. Uh, somebody cannot just surface online and start saying nonsense after giving And these girls are now trending. Like, that's just cheap publicity. Like, they are now kind of... And they are so excited about it because all their videos, they're so happy. Oh, now we're trending. Oh, now we're this. And people oh, no. are saying you girls are so beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> oh, you guys are saying they were blue, and I'm like, for real, beautiful. No, they have zero shame. They have zero shame. Mm -mm. Okay, so coming from a lady, ladies, you have zero shame. No, no excuse me, I didn't say ladies, you have zero shame. Ah, I'm talking Those, to the ladies. Okay. Now. Come on now, it's come on. I'm not, I'm not like that. I'm not misogynist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but these girls, I really don't know what their plan was. But mm. if this was a prank from the onset, I think um, there should have been a way that people could have read between the lines that, okay, this is not actually true. But that video looked too serious for us not to believe it was them. not a prank if everybody knows that that video was not a prank so what are it you was suggesting after um davido decided yeah and then he decided that he's going to pursue the case i feel like that's why they are coming out and they had 30 prank. billion he's <laughs> suing them for that where they won't see them their generation <laughs> they never see yeah. they yeah. have i've forgotten they have money you can the, keep those as sisters, money the rich sisters, sisters you know okay okay <laughs> so they, but, they can probably afford it let's see are you sure they can afford it mm -mm. 30 billion now you're asking me if i'm sure they can 30 billion. <laughs> can you afford it Tewa? If someone should sue you for 30 Not billion right now. <laughs> I'll just tell that person to carry me over. They should carry you to carry me straight <laughs> <Yes>. up. <laughs> well, but don't worry, I'll soon join the 30 BG gang. Then anybody can come with their lawsuit. I'll pay them. But I think David Oshu actually pursue legal action mm. to stop things like this from happening because a lot of people chase clout on, on very unnecessary things. Because, but you know, last um, month, um, one girl came out here yeah, and said she was pregnant for a popular um, entertainer. In code, he's a blogger, but he calls himself entertainer. Mm. Tundi Ed Note, and the girl just, it was so serious. The girl was like, um, she's pregnant for him. This person is not even in Nigeria, and you're pregnant for him. And she was so serious about it. Mm. But you know, Tundi didn't take it serious, and now Davido is coming in. in no, now, I feel in like Davido's case, this is a newly engaged man. Even if, if I imagine somebody going on Instagram and saying that, accusing you of impregnating, and then you, you don't want to take responsibilities. I, I have nothing to lose, so but I mean, David have, has a lot to lose. You have your right good now. name to Look, lose. Look, some, some wives will stab their husband before they even find out that this story is not true, especially when they just give birth to your son. You get so it's kind of I mean, like you know, many people will be ringing your phone at that point. But I think um, this is where we go on a break. But when we return, we will introduce our studio guest, and you do not want to miss this conversation, like I told you earlier. So stay locked. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still 
end up as a useless child. I just see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Now. Oh, yeah. I just did in Africa. We're feeling good. No time to dull. Everybody feeling alright. Minimal mm. Akpala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early, sleeping early. Welcome back, and this is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Like I said before the break, we have a studio guest, and his name is X27, whose birth name is Stanley PC Akadjaku. He was born in the Crook City, Kaduna State, Nigeria, on the 22nd of March to the family of Mr. Patrick and Mrs. Juliet, Juliet Akadjaku. X27 hails from Imo State, Nigeria, and stands as the firstborn of five siblings. He was raised by both his parents, who were musicians, and he was introduced to the world of music by his late father at the age of nine. His father, who owned the Christian High Life music band in the early 80s till the late 90s called the Achievers Band, began teaching X27 and his siblings how to play the musical instruments and the art of performing, performing on stage and singing to large audiences, from church programs to ceremonies and concerts. From the age of nine, he had evolved X27's forte. Professionally, professionally, X27 started his musical career in 2009. In 2016, he received his first nomination in the Nigerian Music Video Awards in the category for the best use of dance in a video. Currently, X27, on his fast rise as a prolific songwriter, performing artist, dancer, model, is carving an incredible niche for himself in the entertainment industry. It is impossible to put in words the experience and exposure X27 has gained through these years. The development of his unique style is the result of a lifetime of music influences from first his late father, Mr. Patrick Akadjaku, to great names such as Michael Jackson, James Brown, Osha, Felakuti. He has recorded and published audios and videos of his songs, including Tobat, Conga, Onyembu, Nobi, Overload, and Call on Me, all songs produced by the prolific and articulate musical producer, Case Beats. Standing on the verge of imminent entertainment success, X27 is not slowing down. With every move he's making, his portraying proves that he's here to make all the difference. Please, pardon my Igbo. Eh? I did ah, learn. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> he fell I mean, down in the day. Oh, yeah, do, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything, oh, yeah. I can't do it. But you're an Igbo guy, right? No, no. I'm, I'm actually Yoruba. Oh, wow. Well, you did a great job, bro. Oh, yeah? Tell you. you hey, clap for me, clap for me, please. please I give it to you, bro. That's the Igbo. To my Igbo brothers and sisters, please, in case I murdered anything, just pardon me. Pardon him, people. Yeah, yeah. They burn you, please. It's, 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 it's <laughs> seven. Mm. How did you come about that name? Oh, well, uh, I came about it rolling on my bed, figuring out what name I could actually roll with. Like, mm. I mean, like all kinds of names. My name is Stanley, so who wants to listen to a Stanley sing, yeah, or perform? But at the end of the day, I kind of like just came up with um, X because we always been tormented by X in mathematics and all. So I was like, X2, number two, right? Mm. Was, or rather, the, the verb two. And then seven is a number for perfection. So apparently I was like, yo, if my life and my music and everything is gonna be about helping somebody be better, how about we take people from nowhere to somewhere, from nothing to perfection? You know, pr pretty much that's how it just came about. So X is nothing, the unknown, two, you know, the mm -hmm. verb to, and seven is the number for perfection. Okay, so, so, hey. From like the unknown to perfection. Mm. So That's like, a very risky decision. So. <laughs> <laughs> totally, but, totally. Yeah, totally, and then yeah. I want to ask, we, with this um, na um, name now, yeah, have you been able to help people from nothing to perfection? I mean, like, it's crazy though. First of all, my dad raised me to be a boss. I don't just do music, I have businesses and stuff. I mean, like, I create jobs, man. You know, at the end of the day, give people opportunities to do stuff, give people opportunity to live better, you know. Mm. Uh, I have a son. Mm. Apparently, you know, I'm not married. No. It's cool. I mean, you know. Just a baby but, daddy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, 
I met this girl, you know, somewhere that looks like nothing. And she's, she's good now. Yeah, she's yeah. living so large. So you moved she's, up from nothing to something. Something like That's that, bro. Wow. Put a Put a handsome boy That's on her arm, moves. too. Mm-hmm. You know, I, put a, mm-hmm. I put a cute boy on her arm. So I, he's, I like that. I like Jason that. is a pretty boy. So. All right, so let's touch on the entertainment industry in Nigeria presently because um, you sound like you crossed over and then you just want to focus on music in Nigeria presently, right? Yeah. So... Um, What's your take on the entertainment industry, especially the music scene, Afrobeat to the world? Especially with the likes of Risky dropping with Popcorn just yesterday, and it's been the talk of the town. So what's your take on the entertainment industry? Well, uh, the Nigerian mu- music uh, scene is so beautiful right now. I mean, like, it's popping. It's everywhere. Everybody's, everybody's getting this vibe. I mean, like, Rihanna is dancing to our songs, and Drake is tripping. You know, everybody's really feeling this sound right now. And with Risky coming out, that was crazy. That was a bull move. You know, when I saw that post where Davido was like, yo, y'all laughed about this, you're going to dance to it. I said, I told my brother, who is actually the prolific producer, Case Beats, I told him, this is, this, you have got to have some, allow me to use the word balls for this, because you, you just have to Football. be big on it. Mm. Footballs, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> you just need basketballs, too. But at the end of the day, I mean, like, the Nigerian industry is really growing at such rapid pace where... It's, it's the giant of Africa when we talk about Nigerian music. It's the giant growing in the world at large because the whole world is beginning to vibe to this. So Risky came and Risky actually just came and it's it's, it's really cool so far. It's it's, it's amazing. I, well, I know she loves the video so much. Oh yeah, dude. Well, she she be, me, she be no, having no, a no, crush no, no, on no, him. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it's always a job. Anything from <laughs> David you know, is always a this, job. She has a huge crush on you. Please call her up, please. No, and you know they don't give nothing less than one million. So yes. Your market. I mean that was the bouncy for them. <laughs> <laughs> she's not about the money. She's just I'm a not loyal about the fan. Money. I just love Davido. Can all I right. just be your Davido for a second? I mean, look at you looking all pretty and stuff. Come on, right. man. Come on. Let's focus, <laughs> let's, let's focus on your focus. <laughs> all right. Focus. So let's talk about your music, man. Okay. What's what's new with X27? What have you been up to? Well, pretty much, um, um. A musical artist, as you know, I'm a dancer. I mean, like, I'm a show um, organizer. I do this for the love of it. You know, I've been sponsoring. I've been doing a lot of things as regards dropping singles, song, you know, videos and all, and organizing my own concert. So far, uh, I've been able to put down two events. Mm. Uh, we had one in East, during the East, Easter period. Mm. Um, it was really crazy. It was knockout. That we was had Africa. Yeah, it was... We had a mad crowd. We had a mad crowd. There was a little challenge in the neighborhood, though, mm. where people fought and, you know, had a... Where, uh, it, where it, it, was in, it was in Surulere. Oh. Why did they fight? Oh, well, you know how you have the Agbero guys have challenges amongst themselves. Mm. So they had a situation there, and I think about four people were killed. So it During was, your what? concert? That was before the concert, so oh. it kind of kept people very scared. But at the end of the day, the turnout was crazy because I didn't even expect... I was thinking I was going to lose a show. But I had a show because the first concert I had, it was so packed that people were jumping over the fence. It, literally, it was this was the situation, the security. I didn't even know I needed more security than I already had. So you didn't it know was, you were AK. <laughs> <laughs> you got me one second, man. I'll burn a boy up in this. <laughs> you know, so the thing was that this second one was amazing, and we're pushing for another one probably in the early months of next year. You know, basically, I, I don't want to have us keep sitting and waiting for this concert and all, mm. you know, in whatever locality you found, in whatever environment you found, do something. I mean, be the local champion if, 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 if that's what makes it better. You know, as long as you're making the progress, a little bit of progress, that's better than nothing at all. Mm. So I organize my own concerts, you know, and stuff like that. And yo, it's gonna be crazy real soon, bro. Um, okay, so now, are you focusing on music or the concert? Because it seems like you're focusing on the concert. You really want to build on that and music. Well, I think I am more of a performer. I, mm. I mean, like my life is, has always been on the stage. Mm. 
from the age of nine, I mean, my dad was already pushing me on stage. We were performing with him. So apparently I found myself so comfortable on stage. I mean, like when you step on stage, it's a moment you just feel like a god. Like you, you, you have the, the hearts of people. You have the, the, you just feel like you could make things happen. And at that point in time, you're just superhuman. And I love that feeling. I love that feeling. I bask in the feeling. So apparently when you're on stage, it's amazing. People could watch your videos. I mean, they just change it. But, you know, when people see you on stage as an experience, mm. they never really get to forget about it. You can forget about a video you saw on TV. They can never forget. So how has this affected your life? You know, started from a very early age. It seems like you didn't have, like, a proper childhood. Mm. If we, uh, permit me to say that. Because um, if you've been on stage since nine, probably you're always going for rehearsals. You're always trying to learn how to play this instrument. So how many instruments do you play? And how did this affect your childhood? Well, I play, uh, so far, I think, three, three instruments. Okay. I play the keyboard. I play the guitar. I pay, play the drums, too. Uh, it was it was a crazy childhood, I'll tell you for a fact. My dad was kind of a disciplinarian, but he was a cool dad, lovely dude, yeah. Mm. Um, Is he still alive? No, he, he's, da yeah, he's yeah. dead. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he passed on in 2011. Sorry about you that. You know, it's cool, it's cool. He's in a better place, yeah? Mm -hmm. He had a long battle with um, diabetes, oh. and he's currently chilling, you know? So um, it was crazy because my dad had a room just as big as this, and he calls it the practice room. It was just a practice room. So all the instruments used to be up in there. It was not the kind of childhood maybe everybody would have wanted because he had us in hours rehearsing. It was mm. stressful. I remember times we'd be playing. My brother plays the bass guitar, so he's carrying this bass guitar that's really bigger than him, and he's sleeping and he's playing. <laughs> and my dad always had a knock waiting to come hit your head with that knock. And <laughs> it, it was crazy. But the good thing was that every time we went on stage, it was explosive. We enjoyed every experience because we were so so little and people were vibing to this. Like, who are these tiny people playing this stuff, you know? So it was so good. I mean, like, I would want to teach my son how to play some of them instruments mm. as he grows older. So are you, growing, are you grooming him to start being a musician like his father? Well... Well, I come from two, well, I'm, I'm the second generation of music in the family, so I guess I would love him to have that, the, you know, the exposure to music. He could do whatever he wants with his life, that's pretty good, mm -hmm. but you know, like, you could always have a base of stuff, something that feels like a, like a, like a leisure stuff to do. You could mm -hmm. just go on the keyboard and be like, oh, I'm feeling a good day, this is good right here, and then you could go back to work the next day, so apparently, I mean, like... If he's going to be a musician, it's mm. fine. Okay, so right now what are you working on? New music or still the concert? Well, I'm working on new music. The truth is this, the music industry in Nigeria is so underfunded. You know, um, you don't have so much going into making this industry mm -hmm. grow very fast. This is more like individual acts. Um, you know, efforts to make the industry grow. So one of the things we suffer is having not having enough to make this happen. You can't shoot a, a video right now, promote the video, do the concert. Sometimes it becomes a challenge. So what I'm doing right now is that I have this one video I'm working on. I just want to put my energy into it. Mm. One crazy video I'm working on, put my energy into it, go back to stage events. You know, I want to have events in different locations give people more like an experience. Some of the money you could use, I, I, this is good. Everybody could go ahead, do a video, put it on air and stuff. But I feel like I want to be able to reach out to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Y you come and see me. I could pull in some of the other stars that are available. Let's go up on stage. Let's vibe with these people, you know. At the end of the day, guys like Duncan Mighty took so many years before even sh shooting a video. So mm -hmm. it, it was, they, they, they still regardless got the the... The, the attention right. they need. So we're actually running out of time. So before um, I wrap up, I'll just like you to do a quick freestyle for us before I wrap up the show. Oh. All right. Let me start with that song that you actually found so difficult. That's Onion Bunobi. Okay. And she's going to be my uh, muse. Will I see my muse or yeah. uh, my vixen on this one? Mm. All right, okay. Vixen. Okay, good, good. Oh, okay. Vixen, no, the vixen, you have to go twer yeah. twerk so a little let's bit. Let's just do this real quick because okay. we're actually running My out beautiful time. baby, you fine like flowers. Mm -hmm. When I look in your eyes, I feel the sunrise. Mm -hmm. Anytime I think of you, I feel like Obama. 
Hmm. Baby, you're one in a million. Oh, you resemble a popo. Baby, you resemble a popo. Oh, uh, you resemble you a popo. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a wrap on this episode. You can join the conversation by using the hashtag Tea Time on all our social media platforms or Twitter does at Plus TV Africa. Also, you can watch us on Outer TV and also in London on Ben TV. I can't and wouldn't end the show without giving a special shout out to my co anchor, Ewa Ritu, aka the Bouncing Baby Girl, as she's fondly called. As well as our thank you goes to our um, studio guest, X27, and to the production crew, Amifel Luwao Shinkaya, saying thanks for watching and see you soon.